Hi, I'm James from Wex Photo Video, and today I'm here with George and Tiffany in Grenga Ford in Norway to test out Panasonic's brand new full frame camera, the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. So the Panasonic S5 Mark II has got a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, but the really big upgrade is its autofocus, which is something we're going to be testing in the fields today by doing a few winter activities. So the Panasonic S5 Mark II has a brand new IBIS system. They're stating up to 200% better than the original S5, which is really handy because we have the original S5 here. So we've got the S5 Mark II and the S5. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a quick stabilization test, myself with the S5 and George with the S5 Mark II to really see the improvements. It also has an active IS mode. Now this is an automatic mode, so you're not gonna be able to necessarily turn it on and off. Now, I'm not sure on this, like as a filmmaker myself, I like having the full control like over my white balance and exposure. I also like having the control over my abyss, so it's definitely something we're gonna test out to see how well it works. It kind of activates when you're walking or doing any kind of strenuous activity. It's gonna be really interesting to see how good the IBIS is in the new Panasonic. So as you can see behind us, we've got a gondola to go up to, which goes right up to the top of the mountain. And as you can see, it is really popular. We've got a ferry behind us, which is actually taking people to this very spot. So I'm really looking forward to seeing kind of what kind of expanse of landscape we've got. And we're going to be doing a few tests on the S5 too. Just wow, the views in Norway are amazing. We were down in the valley earlier getting some shots. We've sort of got a ferry coming in, but now we've come up using the gondola. Tiffany, great idea, really good. Now it is starting to get quite cold. It's around minus 15 degrees now. So we are, we are gonna to have to start wrapping up, but me and, me and George are gonna be using the S5 a little bit more. We're gonna take some more sample videos, sample photos to really test what this camera can do. Just astonishing views. Panasonic has amazing colour science and it really has improved over the years. You've got profiles like Cine D which offer really good colours while still offering great dynamic range and you've got things like Vlog as well which obviously offers the most dynamic range but you are going to have to colour grade it in post. But Panasonic have come up with quite a unique feature I think, something that I actually really like. It's called Real Time LUT. Now what that is, is basically you can apply a LUT to your ungraded footage in camera. Now it is baked in, it isn't something that you can like have it afterwards, so you, it is baked into the actual footage, but it gives you a really interesting benefit. It still offers you the benefits of Vlog, like for instance dynamic range, without any of the negatives of having to color grade it in post afterwards. So if you're in a rush and you're after a great footage with great dynamic range, the real time light is going to be really, really helpful. Now, it's not gonna be for everyone, I have to admit. It's not something I'm always going to use, but if you are in a very quick or sticky situation, this is definitely going to help you out. Now, if you're not interested in using Log, 
Panasonic have got a range of color profiles as you can see on screen, like for instance flats, you've got portrait, landscape, the list goes on and on. Now as you can see there is a massive amount of dynamic range, a really bright sky, again we are here at sunset with obviously the dark kind of mountainous range, so we've got really punchy oranges and really dark blues, the colours of this landscape are absolutely amazing, so I really hope you like the footage. Hi guys, I'm George. I haven't actually appeared in this video yet so far, but I've been helping James make this review. And there's, I wanted to come on camera because there's some stuff that we've been noticing and we really wanted to talk to you both about, and that's the autofocus system. As you may well be aware, Panasonic haven't always had the best autofocus systems in the past. That's actually because they've been using contrast-based systems, which are, in my opinion, a little bit outdated. And you'll be happy to hear, as we are, they've created this new AF system, which is actually a phase hybrid autofocus. Now we've tried it in a few different environments to really test it out because contrast based systems suffered in certain environments like for instance tracking subjects. We know that if you're going moving in and out of the frame it would take ages to actually focus. Now it's got 779 autofocus points almost covering 100% of the frame. So we have got Tiffany running around in the frame to really show you how well this sticks versus the older S5. So as you've been watching here, we've just sort of played for you some of the tests that we've done. But I also want to talk about the fact that we've just generally been using the AF as we've been testing the yeah. camera out of the day. And it's performed very well. I, I think especially com comparably to old Panasonic cameras, I think it's performed so, so much better. We've been using the Panasonic S5 and the S5 Mark II. And the difference really is night and day. The S5 Mark II is so much better for tracking subjects. But it's not all 100% perfect, and I have to be honest about this, because there is a couple of problems I've noticed with the AF. I think it's very responsive in a way that the old cameras were not, in the sense of if I wanted it to focus on a certain point, it would always nail it every time. There wasn't hunting, and hunting, as everybody knows, is sort of the worst thing that an autofocus system can do. But I will say that I have a slight criticism of the fact that if you're racking focus, like I love to use touch rack focus on cameras, so I'll touch one point, touch another, and have the focus rack, and it's a little bit snappy. It's not as slow or clean or glidey like a manual focus would be. Um, so I think that hopefully that's something that they can improve in a firmware update. It's the sort of thing that they actually yeah. certainly can do with a firmware update. I'm sure it'll be, because we'll be able to, you can either have it quite slow, which we found it was too slow, or it was just immediate. And it doesn't have that kind of nice smooth motion that we've known other cameras have. So it, that's something I'm sure can be fixed in an update. But we're not done testing it yet. So what we want to do is the, even though we've lost the light, we're going to head out into the dark and we're going to do some low light testing. And while we do that, we're also going to be using the autofocus. So we're going to keep pushing it and see how it does. So should we be ready to head out? Let's go. Sweet. So we've just got back from uh, doing the low light test. It's got even colder. I didn't even know Norway could get colder. I must say it is absolutely freezing. I've still got my coat on when we're inside. Now we did the low light test and I must say this camera performed really well. So it has an ISO range of 100 to 51,000 with a dual based ISO system. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically you've got two ISOs, one for its lower range. And then once you get to around 2,500, the dual based ISO kicks in. So you're gonna have less grain at that. Now. It's the same for both photo and video, so you've got a few examples here. And I must say, it performed, to be honest, I think a lot better than the original S5. It's a lot less noisy, and the noise looks a lot nicer than I was actually expecting. So I'm really, really happy with the results. Hi, I'm Tiffany, and I'm the head of content at Wex Photo Video, better known as the entertainment factor of the trip, obviously. It's day two here in Norway, and we want to talk a little bit more about the photo specs of the camera. So the S5 II is a true hybrid and it has really shown that throughout the trip. 
Both of us shoot photos in different styles, so we'll show you a few in a second. Um, but for now, James, can you tell us a little bit more about the photo specs? Yeah, so the Panasonic S5 Mark II has got a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. Now, this is great for a variety of different shooting. If you're a wedding photographer, landscape photographer, you know, 24 megapixels isn't ludicrously high, so you're not getting, you know, massive file size and it takes ages to ages to edit, but it's good enough that you can crop in on your photos and you can edit them as, the way that you like them. But if you are after a higher resolution, then you've got high resolution mode and you've got, I've got two modes. You've got 48 megapixels which you can actually hand hold which I think is really really handy especially in a run and gun situation like we are today and also you've got a 96 megapixel tripod version which is also really really nice so if you are after a little bit more resolution you've got that ability. One thing that I think is really interesting as well is that you can switch between photo and video without the settings changing now whilst yeah, that doesn't handy. seem like a big deal it isn't on all cameras and it is really frustrating if you're looking for a hybrid so this does do that and that's great. Yeah. Uh, and you've also got burst mode. So again, this is a mirrorless camera, so you've got electronic shutter, but you've also got a mechanical shutter. So in mechanical shutter, it shoots nine frames per second. But in electronic shutter, it can shoot up to 30 frames per second. Now that's something we've got to test with loads and loads of snow. So let's go ahead and test the nine and the 30 frames per second. So I'm testing the mechanical shutter. Uh, so that's the nine frames per second, but just bear in mind, it's seven frames per second in autofocus continuous. But if you're doing autofocus single shot, that's when it's the nine frames a second. So that's something to bear in mind. Entertainment factor. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> cool, so I've just put it into electronic shutter, uh, which means uh, you can get the full 30 frames a second. Now, obviously just bear in mind that it's gonna have a big buffer afterwards. So if you do take you know, a series of photos, Make sure it's not holding it down for too long, so you'll end up with hundreds of photos. Right, so you ready? Three, two, one. It's weird shooting and there's no sound. Now what's a great thing about the S5 Mark II is resolution really when it comes to video. You can now film up to 6K 30 frames a second, which is great if you're planning on wanting to punch in a little bit or crop in to get your 4K footage, so that's really, really nice. It can also film 4K 30 at full frame, but if you're after 4K 60, you've got to film at its APS-C or Super 35 mil. Now you've also got uh, slow motion as well, which is really nice. So you've got 1080p all the way up to 120 frames a second. Now, this is great and it's a big bonus over, for instance, the traditional S5. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility on resolution and what you're after. You can also film 422 10-bit, which again is great if you're planning on wanting to color grade. It gives you a little bit more kind of range of colors that you can add in as well. Now, although all of those specs are great, Great. There are, in my opinion, a few little bit of disadvantages when it comes to its resolution. Now, two of them are it can't film 4K 120 and it also can't film 4K 60 at full frame. So you are going to have to punch in a little bit with your APS-C crop. Now, that's great when it when you take into consideration price points. because obviously this particular camera is going to be a little bit cheaper than the other competitor cameras, but that's something I would have liked. I liked when I filmed 4K and then I filmed 4K 30 and I filmed 4K 60. I like to have the same focal length. So you know me, I don't like working on massive files. The Panasonic doesn't have massive bit rates, which I think is really good for quite a few reasons. Firstly, you haven't got to spend a lot of money on cards. So we've been shooting on V60 cards and they've been more than fine for the type of shoots we've been doing. We haven't hit any problems with the kind of file transferring from the camera to the card. But it also comes with data transfer as well. You haven't got to take ages transferring one file to, for instance, your computer. And lastly, editing. You're not gonna have the best computer, the fastest computer to actually edit all of this footage, but you're still getting great quality. So you're not losing out on anything, which I think is really nice. So what's also great about the Panasonic S5 Mark II is its aspect ratios. You can shoot in either three by two, 16 by nine or 17 by nine. So you've also got a range of different aspect ratios. So for instance, three by two, for example, is really good if you're wanting to film portrait, but film landscape straight away. So let's say you're a content creator and you want to do vertical video as well as horizontal video, you can do that with one take. The amount of aspect ratios you've got really gives you that flexibility that you need. And that's something that I really like about the S5 Mark II.
So what's great, but also not great about Norway is the light. The light is beautiful this time of year, but the problem we've had is it's like three o'clock and it's basically sunset and it doesn't really reach the full horizon. So it's a little bit challenging. And I must say the S5 has been done really, really well because it's never been like bright, bright. And especially with the temperature, it's never really got above minus 10. Like, you know, I haven't got gloves on at the moment. I am absolutely freezing. So we're gonna head back to the car. We're gonna go to this really, really nice little village to, you know, utilize some of the lights in Norway because it gets dark really quickly. So we've just got back to our hotel. We've been shooting all day. It isn't actually that late, but it is dark. What I wanted to do is just summarize what it's been like to actually use. The sensor's been great, but what's the, the body like? Because there is a little bit of a few body and ergonomic design changes from the S5 to the S5 Mark II. One of them is the actual camera strap harnesses. Originally they had these little O-rings, which were okay, but I do prefer the new design. It's a little bit more ergonomically friendly. They don't kind of get in the way as much. These ones kind of jangled around where these ones kind of built in a little bit nicer. Another thing is the actual electronic viewfinder. You've got a 3.6 million dot EVF with a 0.71 times magnification, which is really, really nice. Really clear and both for photo and for video, you're just getting that nice resolution, which was, was there on the S5, but just not as much. So that's a nice change. You've also got, and it's a feature we haven't used, and that is, it's got a cooling fan. Obviously, it's minus 15 degrees outside. We actually had a problem with these cameras being a little bit too cold sometimes. But what's nice is they've got a cooling fan. Now, it's actually really well designed. It's just based underneath the Lumix logo on the front. And so if you're ever filming in a hot situation or filming for extended periods of times, because these cameras can film unlimited record time, you're never gonna have a problem when it comes to overheating. Now on the S5, you had a micro HDMI, which, you know, it's great, it's nice and small, but the new S5 Mark II has got a full-size HDMI, which I'm sure is gonna please a lot of people. Now, if you are on a professional film set and you're recording multiple audio channels at the same time, the old S5 only could record two, which is standard for most cameras, but the S5 Mark II can record four channel audio. Now that means you can record both two people at the same time as well having ambient audio. Having it all built in is really nice. Now, one more thing before I go is SD cards. It takes both dual SD cards, but instead of having it UHS-1, it's now UHS-2 in both slots. Now, we were using both V60 cards today. Again, you're filming 4K60, things like that. That's a you know, fairly high bit rate. So having the ability of having it in dual cards, so you can use both V60 and V90 cards in both slot A and slot B, gives it you know more functionality. So overall, I really, really like the camera. I think it performed really well in Norway. We were just having a look at some of the, the photos and video. Me, George and Tiffany are super happy with the results. The photos are really good. I love the high resolution mode and the vlog footage. Once we get it color graded, we, I think we're gonna be really, really happy. So write it down in the comments below if we think you've, you think we've missed anything or if there's anything that you want to add. I must say this camera was absolutely exceptional. We really liked it here. And I must say, we're super excited to keep on trying it. I've been James for Wex Photo Video. This has been Goringa in Norway, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.